In the 50th year of the Republic, 1961, the renowned Zhi Ren, attainer of the imperial degree of provincial graduate from Guangdong province, Tang Enpu, died of illness in Hong Kong at the age of 81. Amongst his belongings, there were three pieces of desk accoutrements made of bronze, a pair of engraved bronze paperweights by Chen Henke, and two engraved bronze inkwells by Yao Hua. Chen Henke and Yao Hua were celebrities in the artistic circles of Peking. They were also intimate friends of Tang Enpu. Yao Hua once inscribed an album of ink rubbings of the Princess Dai Guo Chang steel from the Tang Dynasty, 618 to 907 AD. His words are Lately, I suffered from Tophus a great deal. Luo Fu Kang, original name Dun Huang, Tang Tianru, original name En Pu, and Chen Shizhen, original name Hen Ke, visited me during my illness. I fetched this album for perusal, and we admired it for a long time. This episode should not be left undocumented. I chronicle this in the middle of my illness on 15th November of the Chinese agricultural calendar or 1st January in the 12th year of the Republic, 1923. The text is short and simple. The friendships of Yao Hua, Luo Dunhuang, Tang Enpu and Chen Henke are evident. On that day, the four met in Peking on account of Yao Hua's illness. Even so, they did not neglect to partake in conversations on connoisseurship and the arts and managed to express their refined sentiments. Amongst the belongings of Tang Enpu, there's also a colotype printed book, a reproduction of the double stem lotus painting by Chen Henke and dedicated to Peng Xiu Kang from Nanhai, Guangdong province in Ji Wei year 1919. Twenty-six personages inscribed after the painting, including Yao Hua, whose inscription was dated Gensen year 1920. Chen Henke, who added an inscription next to that of Yao Hua, and Tang Enpu, whose inscription was dated Ren Xu Ye. Tang Enpu treasured this album for decades, for it was a relic that recalled long ago friendships in Peking. Tang Enpu, 1881 to 1961, was also known as Sao Pu. Zi Qi Zhan, Tian Ru, native of Xinhui, Guangdong province. He attained the Zhi Ren degree provincial graduate in the 29th year of Wang Shu Reign, 1903. In the fifth year of the Republic, 1917, he relocated to Peking. He was first appointed assistant editor of the Bureau of Historia Qing, and then editor. Between the 8th year and the 13th year of the Republic, 1919 to 1924, he moved to Hong Kong. Yet, 
he still made frequent visits to Peking and Tianjin. In the 14th year of the Republic, 1925, he was introduced by Zhang Yi Zhou and his fellow Zhiren examination candidate Zhang Qi Huang to the warlord Wu Pei Fu and became his assistant secretary. Tang An Pu was accomplished in prose and excelled in medicine. Yao Hua, 1876 to 1930, Zi Chong Guang, Yi He, Hao Meng Lian Hua An Zhu, Fu Tang, native of Guiyang, Guizhou Province. He attained the Jing Si degree, Metropolitan Graduate, in the 30th year of the Guangxu reign, 1904. From the first year of the Republic, 1912, to the second year of the Republic, 1913, he was elected Senator of the Provincial Senate. In the third year of the Republic, 1914, he was appointed President of the Ladies Normal School of Peking. In the following year, he was appointed painting teacher at the Advanced Normal School of Peking, as well as general subjects teacher at the Ladies Normal School of Peking. In the seventh year of the Republic, 1918, he was appointed painting tutor at the Society of Painting Studies in the National Peking University and the Specialized Art School of Peking. In the 13th year of the Republic, 1924, he was appointed president of the Jinghua Specialized Art School. He was accomplished in poetry and si lyrics. He was also skilled in calligraphy and painting. Occasionally, he practiced the art of seal engraving. He was fond of pictorial engravings on bronze, making paperweights and inkwells. Chen Hen Ke, 1876-1923 Zi Si Zhen, Hao Xiu Dao Ren, Kuai Tang, native of Nanchang, Jiangxi province, but born in Hunan province. His grandfather, Chen Bao Chen, 1831-1900, was governor of Hunan province. His father, Chen San Li, 1853 to 1937, was a distinguished poet. The eminent scholar of the early republic, Chen Yingke, 1890 to 1969, was his fifth brother. In the fourth year of the republic, 1915, he was appointed painting teacher at the Advanced Normal School of Peking, as well as general subjects teacher at the Ladies Normal School of Peking. In the seventh year of the Republic, 1918, he was appointed painting tutor at the Society of Painting Studies in the National Peking University. He was accomplished in poetry and skilled in the art of seal engraving. He was also fond of pictorial engravings on bronze, making paperweights and inkwells. Chen Henke and Yao Hua both lived in Peking, shared common interests, taught at the same schools, and saw each other regularly. In the 11th year of the Republic, 1922, when Chen Henke published The Studies of Chinese Literati Paintings, Zhongguo Wen Ren Hua Zi Nian Jiu, he asked Yao Hua to write the introduction. It had been known that a number of personal seals used by Yao Hua were carved by Chen Henke. They are the six seals of Yao Hua, Chong Guang, Lao Meng, Meng Gong, Fu Tang Jing Shi, Gan Ling Gui, Yi Wei Xing. Regarding the pair of bronze paperweights Chen Henke dedicated to Mr. Tang En Pu, they were incised with a few stalks of prunus.
the one on the right and the one on the left merge to form a complete diptych picture. The weight on the right was additionally engraved with two lines of cursive script writings. For the refined perusal of Mr. Tian Ru, Heng Ke painted the prunus. Two seal legends were also engraved, Xiu and to chronicle a painting by Si Zhen. The weight on the left was additionally engraved with a line of poetry in cursive script which reads, Don't bother with a few torn petals. Don't expect all to be in full bloom. Sentence by Yang Chen Zai. Yang Chen Zai, 1127-1206. Original name Wan Li. Zi Yan Xiu, native of Ji Sui, Jiangxi province. He attained the Jing Si degree in the 24th year of the Sao Xing reign in the Song dynasty. During the Guangzhong reign, he was appointed director of the palace library and the fiscal assistant commissioner of Jiangdong. He then declined further appointments. During the Ningzong reign, he was appointed academician of Baomo Ge. He was awarded the posthumous name Wen Jie. His collected works is titled Chen Zai Ji, Collected Works of Chen Zai. This sentence by Yang Chen Zai is an extract from his poem, a composition on the prunus in front of Dao San Tang on 1st January in Wu Sen Year. It reads, On this New Year day, I come not alone. Fresh spring will be my escort on return. Evening rain fills the stone water drain. Eastern wind rustles the Dao San prunus. Don't bother with a few torn petals. Don't expect all to be in full bloom. Wild scent by Riverside Road is ever more fair. Who will fetch it? to plant in Eden. Wu Sen year is the 15th year of the Chun Xi reign in Southern Song Dynasty, the equivalent of 1188 of the Gregorian calendar. It was customary for Chen Heng Ke to first paint the bronze, and then he would entrust the bronze to Zhang Yuecheng of Tonggu Tang in the west of Liu Li Chang to engrave it accordingly. Zhang Yuecheng, 1883 to 1961, original name Fu Ying, Zi Yuecheng, also Yuecheng, native of Xinghe, Hebei province. He was accomplished in seal engraving and bronze engraving. His art of bronze engraving was preeminent in his time. Impressions of his seal engravings were compiled into Si Yi Ju Si Ying Chun. Chen Heng Ke had left an ink rubbing album of bronze paperweights and inkwells that he painted. There are altogether 93 sheets of ink rubbings. It was later published as the works on bronze by Chen Heng Ke. Eighty-one of these are ink rubbings of ink wells, and twelve of these are ink rubbings of paperweights.
The ink rubbing of the pair of paperweights dedicated to Tang Enpu is within this set. From this album, we learned that bronze paperweights painted by Chen Henke are few. After a century of turmoils, it is even rarer still. Of the 12 ink rubbings of paperweights, nine are pictorial engravings of prunus, one is a pictorial engraving of bamboo, and one is a pictorial engraving of trees. Of the 81 ink rubbings of inkwells, there are pictorial engravings of landscapes, flowers, and birds. Some just have calligraphic engravings on them. Looking through this book, even though this may not be a complete record of the works on bronze by Chen Henke, it is nonetheless sufficient to demonstrate its essence. The pair of paperweights dedicated to Tang Enpu is not dated. Chen Henke relocated to Peking in the autumn of the second year of the Republic, 1913, and he passed away in the twelfth year of the Republic, 1923. It was during this period that his bronze works flourished. It is no longer possible to ascertain the year of this work, but it is clear as day the period of this work. Paperweights are utilitarian objects with a long history. References in books can be traced as far back as the Northern and Southern dynasties, 420 to 589, in the 15th chapter of General Biographies, Volume 25, History of Southern Dynasty. There's a paragraph that reads, the following evening, Chang Wu came alone and knocked at the door of the command post. He planned to kill the emperor. The emperor had placed a wooden club and an iron paperweight in the shape of a ruyi of formidable bulk under the desk in the event of danger. They can be used as staffs. The emperor mentioned here is Xiong Daochen, 427 to 482. Gao Emperor of the Ji Kingdom, the incident of his iron paperweight being used as a defensive weapon occurred over 1,540 years ago. Paperweights mostly come in the forms of animals and rulers. Paperweights in the forms of rulers are particularly popular in the Ming and Qing dynasties. They appear either as singles or pairs. The materials used to make paperweights are diverse, such as jade, stone, ivory, porcelain, crystal, zitan wood, ebony, wood, bronze, etc. However, it has always been rare since ancient times to come across paperweights by renowned artists. It is only until late Qing, with the works by Chen Yingsen, and in the early Republic, with the works by Chen Henke and Yao Hua, can paperweights by renowned artists be occasionally spotted. One of the bronze ink wells by Yao Hua in the collection of Tang Enpu is 10.9 cm in length, 13.8 cm in width, and 4.1 cm in height. On the lid of the inkwell, there are engravings of seven seal legends. The upper right seal legend in relief reads, the word forgiveness can be enacted throughout life. On the left 
is a line of small characters in regular script to annotate the characters in seal script. The remaining seal legends in interlio are fraternizing not the illiterate, writings are forever, good fortune along the town, poetry in painting, rewards after hardships. They all have lines of small characters in regular script on the left to annotate the characters in seal script. On the lower left of the lid, the signature Yao Hua was incised. Underneath the signature was incised a small seal legend of the character Yao. Inkwell is a lifelong companion to be handled day and night. Yao Hua selected those phrases that were regularly seen in seal engravings that relate to writing, painting, and self-cultivation. He assembled them onto the inkwell, turning it into an object for reflection. Yao Hua was himself accomplished in seal engraving. At one time, he published an anthology of seal impressions with Chen Henke, titled Collection of Seal Impressions by Chen and Yao. After Yao Hua sketched out the seal impressions on the inkwell, he then handed it to well-known bronze engravers like Zhang Yuecen, Zhang Shoucen, or Yao Xizhou for carving. On the right and left of the lid, there are two additional lines of small engraved characters in regular script. For the refined amusement of my older friend Tian Ru, respectfully presented by Zhang Huirong. Hence, we know that this is a gift from Zhang. The other bronze inkwell in the collection of Tang Enpu is 5.9 cm in length, 10.3 cm in width, and 3.2 cm in height. On the lid, is a lofty gentleman sitting on a mattress with many bottles of medicine by his side. The calligraphy engraving in regular script says, Biographies of Lofty Gentlemen, The Tale of Han Kong Selling Medicine, Meng Fu. Two seal legends were engraved, Meng and Hand of an Immortal, Heart of a Buddha. There's a line of small engraved characters in regular script. Tian Ru made this in Ji Si Ye. At the base of the inkwell, there's an engraved seal legend, Yi Bo, to be treasured like arcade wine vessel. This is a desk accruement commissioned by Tang Enpu for his personal pleasure. Ji Si Ye is the 18th year of the Republic, 1929. By then, Tang Enpu had already retired from politics. It had also been a year since he relocated his family to Hong Kong. Chen Henke died six years earlier. In the following year, Yao Hua passed away too. Work on bronze in the final years of Yao Hua's life is rare. One may postulate that the bronze inkwell was sent to Hong Kong from Peking after it was made. Biographies of Lofty Gentlemen was written by Huang Pu Mi of Western Jing Dynasty 266 to 316. In the second volume, there's the biography of Han Kong. Han Kong Zi Boling, native of Ba Ling, Jing Shao capital. He frequently traveled to the well-known mountains 
to procure herbal medicines. He then sold them in the city of Chang'an. For 30 years, he never gave any discount. Once, a woman was buying medicine from Hong Kong. She became angry that he was unwilling to budge his price and said, Are you supposed to be Hong Kong, never offering a discount? Hong Kong sighed. I want to evade fame, and yet an ordinary woman now knows of me. What is the use of medicine? Thereafter, he sought refuge in the mountains of Baling. Erudites of the court and provincial graduates consecutively summoned him, but he did not show up. Although Hong Kong was an eminent doctor, his ambition was to be a recluse in the mountains. Tang Enpu was also a celebrated doctor. Contemporary writers like Gao Bai Si and Gao Bo Yu had chronicled this in great detail. When he retired to Hong Kong, living in the far corner of the sea, was he not a kindred spirit from another era, a lofty gentleman of our time? For Tang Enpu to request Yao Hua to paint the tale of Hong Kong selling medicine on an inkwell, we could discern that his thoughts were carried away by a far away episode in history. There is an early precedent of Yao Hua to paint the tale of Hong Kong selling medicine on an inkwell. I have seen an ink rubbing of a square inkwell with similar image. The few lines of engraved calligraphy are Biographies of Lofty Gentlemen The Tale of Hong Kong Selling Medicine Pu Chen presented this to Mr. Ren Kong painted by Meng Fu and engraved by Xi Zhou The Autumn Festival in Wu Wu Year Three seal legends were engraved on the lid. Yao, Hand of a Buddha, Heart of an Immortal, and Belonging of a Medicine Container. It is obvious that Ren Kong was a medical doctor. Since this inkwell was engraved by Yao Xijiu, it would not be far-stretched to speculate that the inkwell of Tang Enpu could also be engraved by Yao. Wu Wu year is the seventh year of the Republic, 1918. The two inkwells were made across a span of 11 years. The accruement of inkwell only appeared in the late Qing and flourished in the early Republic. At that time, trains and automobiles were introduced across the country. Traveling to different cities and provinces was no longer an arduous task. Yet, preparing the ink, wielding the brush, should not be constrained by modernity. However, placing an inkstone in the luggage can be burdensome. Bronze inkwell, on the contrary, is light and agile and braved inkwells with calligraphy and paintings by distinguished artists are alluring and seductive. Indeed, inkwells are fine companions for travellers of the Four Seas. According to a paragraph in Volume 5 of the Miscellaneous Records of Antiques by Deng Zicheng, It is not clear when Inkwell was first made. As per legend, a scholar was about to take the imperial examination. His wife considered the inkstone to be quite cumbersome. So instead, she used her box for rouge to hold his ink. It is an alluring tale. However, there is no concrete evidence to support this. 
Inkwell was probably first made around Jiaqing and Daoguang reigns. In Pingwu year of the Daoguang reign, Wan Wenda celebrated his 60th anniversary of attaining the Zhiren degree by using the 20 tails of silver he was awarded by the provincial government when he first qualified as a Zhiren to make an inkwell. It was made to a perfect round shape with a lid on top and two columns on the side attached to a chain. In the early years of the Guangxu reign, this inkwell was still kept in his house. Among the shops in the capital which specialized in inkwells, Wan Li Zai is regarded as a pioneer. Chen Yingsen, a Xiu Cai, cultivated talent started the fashion of engraving calligraphy on inkwells. His original name was Ling Bing. He was accomplished in medicine, calligraphy, and painting. He would write the calligraphy on bronze and then engraved it himself. This is the reason his works can advance into the realm of ingenuity. This was in the first year of the Tongzi reign. Wan Wenda invented the inkwell in Pingwu year of the Daoguang reign, the equivalent of the 26th year of the Daoguang reign, 1846. Wan Wenda, 1764 to 1849, original name Yuan, Zi Bo Yuan, Hao Yun Tai, Nian Jing Lao Ren. He was awarded the posthumous name of Wenda and was a native of Yizhen, Jiangsu province. He attained the Jing Si degree in the 54th year of the Qianlong reign and was appointed in succession provincial governor of Zhejiang province, governor general of Hubei and Hunan provinces, and governor general of Yunnan and Guizhou provinces. He wrote extensively and was a celebrated scholar of the classics. After a hundred years, one may not be able to find another vista of a group of works on bronze by eminent artists dedicated to one person, such as this group, which includes a pair of paperweights by Chen Henke and two inkwells by Yao Hua, all dedicated to Tang Enpu. As Tang Enpu had sought refuge in Hong Kong, his treasured artworks managed to circumvent the great destruction unleashed by the Cultural Revolution in mainland China. The splendor of those early Republican years can thus be passed on to inspire those who will follow and rise.